or whatever a person is interested in. It doesn't slow them down. They just have to find out how to adapt to each day as to what their needs are. And I can speak for myself, but everybody is different. And so that being the case, they have to find their own ways to adapt. In my day, there wasn't much time to prepare me for all the impacts of the surgery, but the more time you have of information before you go into it is very, very helpful. Having a laryngectomy is a life-changing experience, and there is a lot of important information you'll need to know. In this program, you'll learn about daily care, communication options, and safety. You will also hear the experiences of others who have had a laryngectomy. After your procedure, often the biggest change and challenge is communication. There are a variety of methods by which you can communicate, including writing, silent articulation, sign language and gestures, or communication books with pictures, words, and phrases. Technology can also provide communication options such as type and speak applications, tablets, or smartphones. In addition, augmentive and alternative communication devices are available such as Dynabox. An electrolarynx is another commonly used device. It takes a while to uh, uh, practice to get it uh, functioning well, but uh, for me it's worked out very well and I'm very content using this. It has its drawbacks of course because I'm not sure I like the way I sound, but it's more important that people can understand me. And it's a wonderful uh, device for attracting attention from children. A surgical option using a tracheal esophageal prosthesis, or TEP, can allow a person to speak. And what they do is they reconnect between the esophagus and the trachea with a hole, and then they put a prosthesis in there, which is a tube. And that tube allows the air to go in, but not the saliva and so on from my eating food, uh, the eating tube from coming into my lungs. I use that air by occluding my stoma or covering it up, and I push the air into my esophagus. And I use the muscles on the back of my esophagus as false vocal cords so I can talk with it. That's basically the way I speak. And then there's also esophageal uh, speech, which is people can actually, uh, it's very hard to do. Uh, there's only about probably 10 to 15 percent of the people that actually end up being able to do it. But it's, it's another way where basically they do the same thing I do. But they don't have to occlude their stoma. They learn how to swallow air or take air in and then use it slowly coming back out almost like a burp. And they can speak just about the way I do. So it's, it's uh, then they don't have to have their hands on it or anything. So that works too. Many people are surprised by how easily they learn to care for their airway. Check for secretions in and around the stoma at least three times daily initially and daily once the surgical area is healed. Do not allow any secretions to build up or dry around the stoma area. It is necessary to have equipment available at home as well as readily available in a travel kit or purse so you can clean your stoma at any time. Items needed include a mirror, flashlight, gauze swabs, saline solution, and tweezers. For a person with a laryngectomy tube, clean the tube. In a hospital setting, this is done with sterile water. The stoma is cleaned with gauze and water. The tube is lubricated with a water-based lubricant and inserted into the stoma. The HME is inserted. For a person using a TEP device, clean around the stoma, typically with gauze and sterile water. 
This person cleans his TEP device using a brush and flashlight. Dried secretions are removed using tweezers. The HME plate is applied and the HME is inserted into the stoma. For people initially starting out, the important thing is to, to work with the nurses and the SOPs in the hospital so that they learn how to properly care for it. They should clean it at least three times a day uh, when they initially get out of the hospital. As they go through their life, they'll learn different ways to do it. One thing I do differently is for my device that I the tube I wear inside, I don't glue it onto my head like most people do with the various bandages that they provide to. I use this, this uh, ribbon just because the stuff you have to put on your skin I think is a little rough on it after a while. And so this isn't great looking but it's, I'm comfortable with it. And so I think everyone needs to find ways of doing things that are too slow for them. And yet, say... Keeping your mucus thin is important to maintain your laryngectomy. Here are a few things to help with this. Shower humidity will assist, as well as a nebulizer or aerosol device. Other ways to thin mucus is the use of a heat and moisture exchanger. Also, breathing in steam from a bowl of hot water or room humidifier and drinking plenty of water will assist. By taking a shower, a good steamy hot shower in the morning, breaks up the mucus, breaks up, and particularly when you first get out from the operation, you'll still have wound boozing and, and some bleeding and so on in there. And it helps break that up so you can cough it out and get rid of it. Coughing helps clear your airway. Practice deep breathing exercises throughout your day. Your mucus may change during different times of the year and may be thicker during a cold or flu. People need to realize that they're not hooked up the same way anymore, but they still have the same functions going on in their bodies. So the trachea has always given them moisture within their trachea. And, but they normally either just spit it out or else they swallowed it. They, didn't, they did it automatically. Now you can't do that anymore. You have to get rid of it, so you have to cough it up and get it out. You need moisture to do that. There are a few safety concepts to consider. In the shower, do not get a lot of water into your stoma. A handheld shower spray may be helpful. Be careful not to spray aerosols near your stoma. During hot weather, protect your stoma from sunburn. If you go to the beach, be careful not to get sand in your stoma. Do not go swimming unless you have the correct breathing equipment and have had lessons in how to use it. Wear a medical alert bracelet or necklace that identifies you as a neck breather. You may also want to have a wallet card. They're an orange card that will alert people to uh, that you're a neck breather, that you're not. There, a lot of people don't realize the difference between a trachea and a laryngectomy. A person with a trachea or a trach in it is still connected to their mouth, so they can go ahead and put oxygen over their mouths. We, of course, are not connected that way anymore. We have a, they have to put the oxygen to our stoma. So we have to warn people on that, and we tell them by telling them more neck breathers. We do that with the pocket cards, with the window stickers, with our medic alert tags. Bring a medication list to all appointments. You may wish to put an emergency number into your cell phone under ICE in case of emergency. Think about asking a family member or friend to help you record a phone message in case of emergency. Services are also available for landline phones. Support and resources are available to assist you.
have a very supportive group of friends that don't, uh, that don't try to hush me up when I try to speak. They tend to listen and, uh, they don't, I don't think they feel sorry for me, which is good. And they expect me to do what I can do, and so, but having supportive people around you, and of course Roger and my son, can Living with a laryngectomy requires some changes to your life. Most people adjust well and lead normal lives after they have had some time to get used to the changes. In many ways, life is it's different, but yet the, you find your own normal after a while. Oh, I'm a, I'm a avid fisherman and a bird hunter. I also like to go out and just do camping in general. I have a, quite a large wood shop where I build furniture and, uh, you know, do everything from a little simple box up to, uh, right now I'm building a bedroom set. There hasn't been anything I found that I haven't been able to do in one form or another. I may have to change the way I do it, but I'm still able to do it. It's an ongoing program all the time. It's just a stumble in the road and you keep on going.